There aren't any recordings of Charles Haddon Spurgeon speaking. Um, there are eyewitnesses of what his voice sounded like, of his posture in the pulpit, of his size and shape generally, and of his, exactly the way he spoke, is written down, was written down by note takers, um, who then reproduced faithfully his sermons for many, many, many years. I'm not sure if it wasn't even something like 30 years. In these lovely black, well, I mean, they, they didn't put them in there, they're a metropolitan tabernacle. You are over the speed limit. In, uh, in, in uh, London, produces these black band vo bound volumes of Spurgeon's works. And there are a number of people who then read these out to the people that want to hear a sermon in audio, including sermonaudio.com. There's a they, Spurgeon's got his channel. I've read a couple um, of sermon speeches. They're wonderful to read out, out loud or not to tape. If I had some time, I'd do some more of them. They're a wonderful preacher. Um, and uh, people call him the Prince of Preachers. Okay, it's, I always wonder a little bit about these psychopathic things, but uh, but still, you can see why they you know, get enthusiastic about him. Um, just to read, read it, and another thing which is wonderful to read is Fox's Book of Martyrs. But it's, I mean, it's it's a wonderful ornate language. But you don't know. I mean, people when I read my my few, and I've did, I've done so few of them. I think one or two, maybe three. Yeah, I think I can only remember two specific ones. I got some very very nice comments on sermonaudio.com. I don't have the account there anymore. Um, but um, I, uh, I got some very positive responses from people who said, well, look, the other people doing this are Americans, because he's very popular in the United States. But we don't feel, we feel that when we hear your voice speaking it, because you've got a British voice, it sounds more authentic. Now, of course, he was a Londoner from central London. He lived, well, more than 100 years, getting on for 200 years, I suppose, uh, earlier. And, uh, and, and I'm not even 100% of this, I'm sure, of my timing there. I think he's, some of the preaching that he was doing was about 100 years before I was born. So 150 years, I think that's probably about right. So, um, so, so uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, I'm doing all this from memory. Um, and uh, so basically, you don't know what he sounded like. We don't know what he sounded like. If we could hear, if I were to read out one of his sermons, which I have done and which I probably will do in due course on YouTube as well, it's one of the things I have in mind to never did it. Um, but uh, it basically, it basically, it might sound to American, oh, this sounds much more like the original, but we simply don't know. For all we know, yeah? The, I mean, we're talking about some time not too long after Dickens' time. Dickens gives London accents in his book because he was familiar. He travelled to the United States as well and travelled in different places. And he reflected accents of places he'd been to in the way he wrote certain people's speech. So, like, wary, wary and things like whittles. Yes, a tendency to say V as W. Yeah? That is something which we know from Dickens' records was commonplace in London then. Uh, we certainly don't say that in London now much, yeah? Uh, there's a tendency to, to make the R go like that, but not the V. Most people say V very clearly as a V sound, yeah? They don't say very, they say very, yeah? The tendency to say very as very is more like Eastern Europe speech, uh, but not London in, in that sense, not, not the actual copies of, of a later period. So we don't know if, if, if it could be, of course, that Spurgeon did something like that. And we simply don't know about it. Yeah? Um, so so I can, all I can do is, is use the speech that I have shaped to the structure of his thinking and his writing and hope that intonation as it comes out is where he would have put it and that it's said in a kind of manner, with, with the intonation in a manner, which he himself would have thought, okay, this reflects my, what I wanted to say with my sermon. And if you can do that, then that's good enough. You don't know, of course, if you were doing it right. But you just do it, and if people appreciate it, you do it because you're doing it for people now, not, not really for Spurgeon. I mean, at the end of the day, if, if, uh, if, I, did, uh, if 
I did a, 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 a suite of sermons, Spur, a, a, a Spurgeon sermons on YouTube, and, and it meant that a lot of people started reading them. Yeah, or said, oh, I like this, I'll read some of them as well, you know, and get all the volumes and read them too. Uh, then uh, that would be okay, wouldn't it? That would be uh, a good result, and uh, more important than what, what uh, he would think if he could hear it, because of course he also comes from that era. Our voices to him might sound very strange indeed. I mean, I, I listen to uh, the way young people speak in London today. I can't listen to it, and so, uh, I have a similar reaction from uh, the person that teaches me Japanese. He also teaches me some, some the finer points of, of Polish. Um, but basically, the lesson that I have with him is. My, is broken up into Japanese and Polish. And the Polish is, is effectively, it's reading out loud a history book. And and if I don't understand something I read, because it's, it's high prose, yeah? Chanowski is the, 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 the person that wrote it. And it's, he writes a very high standard of prose in Polish, very flowery, and uh, not always easy to understand. So if you can read that and understand it, you can read any Polish. So um, it's every so often I have to stop and analyse the sentence or take some of the flowery expressions he's used and um, and dis discuss them as to how they will be used today, or if I can use them today, or if they, if they would be completely, you know. And it's, it's not that he's an old writer. He, he wrote these books actually since the political changes, but he's a, he has an old-fashioned way of speaking. He has his years, so he has a... That, it's not that he wrote them a long time ago. It's more Polish, but it's, it's flowery and at times almost archaic Polish. So, um... It's, uh... I mean, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of language tuition, but uh, certainly when, if I can control the lesson and the, and the teacher basically is there to respond to my inputs and bounce things back and forth from me, then that's worthwhile doing. If it's an educated, I'm talking about a really educated person, whereas unfortunately most language tuition is done by people that have a less than average grasp of their own language, because they're not particularly necessarily intelligent people with a profession that could pay them back better than uh, doing language. Sorry, but if that's you, but fortunately it's often true. I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying if you haven't been listening to this, and you're a language teacher and you consider yourself to be more um, more than average intelligent, well maybe you are, you know, maybe you, most people think they are when they're not necessarily, but maybe you are, um, and, you're, and you're doing it for love, okay. Panavergis is where we're headed. So that was the, the, uh, the, the Lithuanian Latvian border we just went through, and as you saw, it was um, almost uh, non-existent. The only thing that made me stop was that friendly guy that I thought we wanted to walk in front of my car, but he didn't. Uh, but no, no stopping necessary. That's Schengen. It's uh, Schengen in full effect. You can see that there was a, a border point there in the past. And certainly I've experienced um, one of the last people, I suppose, that very last, but the last final year of it being there, before the European Union. I mean, they, when they joined, when these uh, ten states joined the European Union in 2003, um, and that was the last time I went through a Latvian and Lithuanian checkpoint together in 2003, but not in May, it was earlier in the year. Um, in February, I think, yes. Um, that was still functional then, the Latvian the Lithuanian one. Um, but I think that full Schengen entry was, wasn't for about another year or so afterwards. It was joining the European Union and then shortly afterwards it was officially doing the Schengen thing. I think Schengen itself was around the same time coming into effect, but it uh, wasn't immediately. And for example, nowadays all the Schengen states have got certain standards for the way they do airports. So they've got separate Schengen parts and non-Schengen parts of all the major airports in the Schengen region. But that took a while to do, and that wasn't finished until this couple of years ago. So it's not like Schengen's work. Like a light switch that switches on or, on or off. It's more, it's more like a dimmer switch that comes gradually on. So. I've kept up my spiel quite well, haven't I? Just talking about this and that, most of the journey. Is it? 
to do 100 miles of non-stop coverage with discussion. That may be a record, but then that's what a dash cam is for, isn't it? I'll try and do. I'll try and set a record down. I won't, I won't turn it off yet. I might have to turn off talking. Uh, and I like to think that for some of you, anyway, that's an additional attraction of these films. If you can listen to me blathering on, I know that some of you have said that it's a nice way to go to sleep. Well, fair enough. That's okay. I do that as well to to um, to some radios uh, people that I actually do like what they say an awful lot. So I just use it to go to sleep. Um, so if somebody does that with my stuff, then that's fine. It's perfectly understandable. So. Um, particular piece of footage, I don't know how, how big of chunks to slice it into. I've been slicing it into smaller chunks. Uh, my my films over the last year since, since somebody told me that uh, that's a way to get more hits. I know it's also what Alan does. Alan Heath. He's got a lot of smaller films, whereas some of my earlier ones were really huge. So I know I've got more length of content, but he's got more films. And since he's also got more subscribers, well, it may be that simply does more interesting stuff. But, um, you know, I've got more subscribers, he's got more views, that's the way it is. So, uh, in order to get more views, there's a really neat of films out there in the first place. Each, each film could go viral, but it's more likely than not these days not to. Um, but it becomes like a, a, like a little ticket for views, for, for, for the views things. Watch it and people then get to the end and say, Well, I quite like that, I'll do another one tomorrow, I'll do another one right now. And you get, then you get a uh, additional click, I suppose. And I used to get 3,000 a day. You are of, over the speed limit. The views, am I really? 70 years? Okay, I'm going to go 70. Over the speed limit. Don't no, 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 no,